Welcome back to another installment of Garage Science. Uh, unfortunately, when I hit record on the video camera, it uh, didn't actually start recording. I must have missed the button somehow, uh, but didn't record. Uh, what I wanted to be was a time lapse of me drawing out a matrix of holes that I'll be drilling into the build plate of my 3D printer. Uh, basically, I've been trying to uh, use some magenta pigmented Autodesk resin and just had a hard time getting this resin to stick to my build plate and uh, I need to create uh, more of a mechanical uh, bond between the part and the build plate and so what I'm going to do is have holes in the build plate so the resin actually cures up into the hole slightly and that should uh, give it a little more strength so it doesn't separate off the build plate so easily. And So what I've done is I've taken my build plate and what I'm going to do is create a matrix of holes that are spaced out a quarter inch uh, from each other uh, off center. And so I've created this matrix of lines here that I'm going to use as the pattern to drill the holes. If you have a CNC machine, uh, you don't need to do this, obviously. Uh, you just load your program. Uh, I don't have a CNC machine, so we're going to do this by hand. I've marked the surface with this uh, steel uh, basically poking tool and it uh, marks up the aluminum pretty well so uh, you get really fine lines. Uh, you could try and do this with a marker but your lines are probably going to be really thick and it's going to be hard to get really uniform looking holes once you go and start drilling. And uh, then just as a straight edge I've used uh, angle, uh, right angle aluminum uh, just for straight edge purposes. Now, this build plate uh, does normally have a, another sheet of metal over the top of it, so that way the screw that's in the center that connects it to the Z-axis uh, isn't in the build area itself, so these screw holes on the outside actually screw on another faceplate to the top of this. Um, I'm not going to drill holes in that faceplate just in case I want to go back to the original build plate. I'll be able to just screw that faceplate back on here and cover up all those holes, and it'll be good as new. So we're going to try and run with that and just give you uh, an idea of what the whole matrix is going to look like. Basically what I have here is an eighth inch hole followed by a sixteen inch hole followed by an eighth inch hole and so it alternates going down uh, width wise and uh, length wise and so that should leave enough material between the holes to still have the structural integrity in the build plate but also allow enough holes uh, throughout the build plate to um, give that mechanical bond that I want. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, kind of a simple modification. It's just going to take a while to drill all those holes. So we'll see how it turns out. In addition to modifying the build plate itself by perforating it, uh, you can also add a raft to your part uh, as it's being printed. Uh, this raft will be bigger than the part itself so that way you get more contact area with the build plate and that should provide a little better adhesion uh, and keep your part from falling off the build plate as it's printing. Most slicers for DLP and SLA printers allow you to build rafts, but usually they have a, a consistent thickness throughout the raft. And so if you use resins that tend to warp and curl as they are cured, uh, you might need a slightly modified raft. And so that's what I've done here is I've built a raft with four different layers so that way as the resin is cured and it possibly tries to start uh, warping or curling, uh, it'll step up to a smaller area and basically keep the edges of the part uh, adhered to your build plate so it won't be able to actually peel up on the edge, it'll be trying to peel uh, on the inside of the part. So usually I print at 50 micron layer heights and so I do 20 base layers in Creation Workshop so what I've done here is I've created a raft that's one millimeter thick and has four different steps to it. So each step is one quarter of a millimeter thick and that will result in five layers per step before it actually starts building the actual part and it'll build it in the center area. Now in terms of size, you don't need to necessarily build a special raft for every part. Uh, this is a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter kind of base size raft and each um, new step is inset by um, by five millimeters on either side. And so what you can do is when you import it into your slicer program you can scale it uh, to be the correct uh, 
width and length that you need for your part. So I'll go ahead and give you an example of that. All right, so in Creation Workshop, you can open up. First, we'll go ahead and get our STL file loaded. All right, so that's our STL. And we will make sure it's on the bottom of the build area. Next, we're going to add our raft. Now, so Creation Workshop does allow you to add your own raft by clicking that. And so it creates a raft that's slightly bigger than the part that uh, is about two millimeters thick and it'll go around the base of the part. Excuse me, it might, might only be one millimeter thick, one or two millimeters uh, for the base raft. Um, but even then, your part still might have trouble sticking to the build plate uh, depending on the resins you're using, the peel uh, process that you're using, and the, the roughness of your build plate. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove that support and we'll open up our own raft. So we'll import that. I did import uh, sideways, so first thing we're going to do is rotate it. And then we are going to move it to the base. Now this is obviously much bigger than what we need, so we'll start by scaling this. And we don't want to do scale all because that will scale the thickness as well, so we're just going to do the X and Y, and we'll start by scaling it by 50%. Uh, that's a little more than we need, so now that we've gone 50% of our original size, we need to increase it, so we need to go to do 110%. So that will just open it up a little bit. And for the Y direction, we'll just go straight to 60. And, yeah. Go a little bit, a little bit smaller. All right. So now you can see here we have um, a now modified raft. It's a little bit bigger. It uh, doesn't use up that much more material than the raft that Creation Workshop builds because again it steps down and gets thinner as you get uh, closer to the base. And so you're not actually uh, using up that much extra resin by building a raft like this. And you have probably nearly uh, tripled or quadrupled the surface area that's in contact with the build platform uh, so you're getting a lot better adhesion to the build platform this way than if you were to build the part straight to the build plate uh, without any raft whatsoever so between having a custom raft and uh, perforating the build platform then you should really have reduced or completely eliminated uh, part separation from the build platform in addition to perforating the build platform and using a custom raft you can also I uh, want to keep in mind that uh, perforating the build platform is going to give you better adhesion, but uh, you still need to have a rough surface on the build platform. So if you haven't done so already, I would recommend taking 60 grit sandpaper or uh, maybe 100 grit if you don't want to go that rough and sand your build platform and, and roughen that surface so that way the resin has something um, uh, that is uh, got scratches and indentations, micro indentations in it to adhere to uh, so that way uh, you don't have any uh, part separation because the surface is too smooth. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and go over basically what I did with the uh, build platform. So you saw that I did the layout. I put the, the quarter inch by quarter inch um, matrix um, on here and then I went through and I drilled eighth inch holes followed by sixteenth inch holes um, all the way down and across and that took an incredibly long amount of time. And I did it with a hand drill, don't have a drill press, and uh, fortunately don't have a CNC mill, which would have made this so much easier. But uh, do what you got to do. Uh, it still came out looking pretty nice and pretty happy with the result. Um, one of the reasons why it looks uh, so good is because the, uh, the marking tool that I use, I actually popped a, um, a mark, uh, a dimple, at each intersection for the uh, quarter inch by quarter inch matrix. Just that way the drill bit wouldn't drift while uh, drilling the holes and then I basically did two passes. I did one pass of 16 inch holes and then another pass of 8 inch holes. Now one of the important things uh, to do if, you're, if you want to do this the way I did it is do the build plate with the 16 inch holes and then if you want to make a tool to separate the parts off of your build platform then uh, take your build plate with the 16th inch holes uh, drilled throughout it, put it on a piece of MDF, secure it in place so it doesn't wobble, and then re-drill through those 16th inch holes into the MDF to basically mark that hole. And do that again all the way across so that way because 
again, if you're not using CNC, then your holes could be ever so slightly um, off center. And um, once you are dealing with this many holes, trying to put screws through them all at the same time, uh, you really need them to be perfectly lined up. So re-drilling through the holes, uh, really make sure that that happens correctly. Uh, the other thing you're going to need to do is cut off one of the corners of the build plates just to indicate that corner um, meshes with the removal tool right here. I cut off that corner too so I can line it up perfectly. All the holes line up and there's no issues. Uh, so then once you get the 16th inch holes drilled into this you can then go over again and you can um, drill out a what I did was a 7 64th inch hole uh, so that way I could screw in these four TAC 40 screws and these screws are one inch long I do have guide studs on the outside so that way you can line up the build platform before setting it on all the other screws to actually pop the part out. So basically the build platform slides onto here and then all of the screws protrude up through the build platform and that will be able to pop our part off since it'll be pretty well adhered to the build plate. So I've tested this, it uh, works pretty well, and I'm pretty satisfied with the results. Uh, it didn't take that long, uh, it's a dedicated afternoon. I do recommend if you're going to uh, drill these, if you don't have like a CNC mill, nothing like that, um, you want to be careful you don't break a lot of drill bits. Uh, so what I did is I was drilling these, just spray some WD-40 over your build plate as you're drilling, <clears throat> so that way uh, you get some lubrication in there, your drill bits will last quite a bit longer. And uh, I would recommend at least having two or three 16th inch drill bits on hand because you will probably break a couple. The nice thing about this build platform design from 3D Facture is it's actually two pieces because they originally didn't want this screw to be in the middle of your build area. Don't really care for this application because I have holes everywhere anyways. But because of that, there's these screw holes on the perimeter where there's actually a flat plate that screws onto here. And so here is that flat plate. And so if I do feel like wanting my build platform back in its original condition, I can simply pop that plate on. I still have all the perforations, but now I have, again, a solid surface to print on. So this is actually a pretty nice uh, setup. I can have it either way. So now that I've shown you the build platform, let me go ahead and show you uh, the print results I had from the Maker Rook that I printed using this platform and the graduated raft methodology that I showed you as well. Alright, so got the build platform modified and got a test print completed on it. I'll show you that. So basically 3D printed a rook and I used the uh, enhanced raft on the bottom. It's one millimeter thick, so not much material used up there. Um, the print had absolutely no problem sticking to the build platform and uh, just as a better point of example on the adhesion to the build platform you see the part did not finish and that's because it actually broke off and stuck to the bottom of the vat so the material itself broke before the part separated from the build platform so it had really really good adhesion to the build platform I'm pretty excited about that so that turned out really nice so we'll go ahead and try this out and see how well it separates the part. So right off the bat I need to loosen the ball joint so that way it flexes a little bit. Right, so that way the connecting portion uh, can rotate a little bit. Alright, so it's sitting there, it's actually being stopped by the part slightly, so I'm going to gently press it down and see it should just pop it off the build platform. It is uh, breaking the raft a little bit, but we'll see if it'll separate before breaking it completely. And there we go. Alright, so that was pretty easy. The uh, build platform did get uh, shattered a little bit, but 
print survived. And there you go. So again, build platform didn't uh, didn't survive, but pretty happy to see that the part itself uh, made it. And yeah, so very very excited about this. Got uh, a very good build platform and process. I shouldn't really have any parts uh, that separate from the build platform now. Again, just as the same uh, thing I said already is that the. Um, the fact that the part broke before it separated from the build platform says a lot about the build platform adhesion. So, and it really didn't take much effort to pop it off of the build plate uh, with that special tool. So, I would highly recommend if you're going to do this to your build platform, uh, take the time, uh, make yourself a little tool like what I did to uh, <clears throat> separate the part off of the build platform. It does take a while, uh, especially if you don't have a CNC machine and you use a hand drill like I did, but uh, just as a point, of simplicity, uh, you don't need a whole lot of tools to make the sort of modification to your 3D printer and get these sort of results. So uh, a little patience goes a long way when it comes to this kind of stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you got a lot out of it. Uh, hopefully you get much better results from your DLP or SLA printer and you have fewer failed prints. Uh, ever since I made this modification, I know I've had uh, pretty much zero uh, failed prints due to parts separating from the build platform so I've been very pleased with these modifications. If you enjoyed watching this video go ahead and click the like button. If you haven't done so already I highly recommend you subscribe to this channel. I try and push out a lot of really good information. Leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of this video, what you think I can do better. And I hope you enjoyed watching. Check out some of my other videos.